This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 694, For the Mom Who is Sick and Tired of Mom Guilt, by Emma Scheib of simpleslowlovely.com. Hello, everybody. Greg Audino here, welcoming you back to the show that is all about improving your relationships. That's not all we've got, though. Come by oldpodcast.com or search for Optimal Living Daily wherever you're hearing this to find all of our shows, which cover a very wide range of topics. Now, the post I've got for you today is a reflection on being a mom from a brand new author for our show, actually. I'll tell you more about Emma and her site right after the post, but for now, let's get right into it and start optimizing your life. For the Mom Who is Sick and Tired of Mom Guilt by Emma Scheib of simpleslowlovely.com The not good enough message has chased me for most of my life, and after 40 years of running and hiding from this message, I'm exhausted, especially since the message is now delivered in the form of mom guilt. And now that it's attacking my motherhood, and essentially my relationship with my kids, I'm not just tired, I'm angry. That voice inside my head that whispers in all sorts of creative ways, you are not good enough, has to go. Prior to having children, my anxiety is centered around things like grades, sleep, and other external achievements. Right now, almost all of my anxiety is around my parenting skills or my perceived lack of. They've watched far too much television this weekend, she whispers. When was the last time you did something creative with them? Are you really going to let them eat chicken nuggets for the second night in a row? And the harder I try, the louder she gets. Mom guilt is never satisfied. Like last week, I did all the things, all the things from all the suggestions in those Instagram stories, online articles, and parenting books. We went on two bike rides, we built blanket forts, I consoled a sick child, we made gingerbread men, and I even cried in front of them, because apparently that's good for them too. And still, the voice inside my head wasn't pleased. It wasn't enough, and it certainly wasn't good enough. Mom guilt kept reminding me that they still weren't enrolled in the gym or dance classes we'd been talking about, or that just that morning I'd sent my five-year-old to school without a jacket, it's winter here. I'm tired and angry at this ever-present guilt, and I'm pretty sure I'm not alone. We rarely are. Five reminders for when mom guilt gets too much. Number one, it's all relative. I usually only hear this not good enough message loud and clear after being privy to what someone else has decided is good parenting. My own failings are only spotlighted relative to someone else's life. Except, this isn't someone else's life, or someone else's kids. What would happen if I tried to live without all the noise and more by my intuition? Turn off the phone. Take a break from your feeds. Even take a break from those educational articles you find on Pinterest. Trust your gut, mama. Number two, being real is better than being a perfectionist. One of my core values is to be authentic and real. This is because I've lived a good portion of my life chasing perfection. In 40 years, I've never caught it though, so I choose to be real instead. And if this means not cleaning the bathroom for two weeks or chicken nuggets two nights in a row, so bloody be it. I'm raising kids, not prize-winning poodles. I also want my girls to know that it's okay to be real, to be them completely imperfect and yet wonderful and enough at the same time. The best way I can do this is by being real in front of them. Real is risky. It's vulnerable. Sure, we might get a bit tatty and worn being real, but real is the place where we find the most genuine and fierce love. Number three, it hurts our relationship with our kids. This not good enough message is robbing me of the joyful times I could be having with my children. How? The anxiety that comes with the message leaves me feeling helpless, and I wind up being despondent around them. Another thing to feel guilty about. Apparently, comparison is the thief of joy, but so is anxiety. I want more joy and less anxiety. If I catch myself early, I can combat these feelings with gentle reminders of the things I have done with my children, rather than focusing on the way I've fallen short. Number four, your best is always good enough. Mama, I know you. And I know you do your absolute best as a parent, just like I do. And that's good enough. Why? Because we can't do any more than our absolute best. It's not possible. Rather than try and achieve big things all the time, like 
better routines, less screen time, and more vegetables. Yes, these are big things. I want to focus on just doing my best in each moment. It'll be good enough. Number five, small and simple are okay. It's actually not hard to hear this not good enough message if you just listen carefully. We are fed it every day. Strive for the best, go hard or go home, dream big. Society tells us what's good enough and what falls short all the time. It's no wonder it's wearisome trying to escape the thing. Even as someone who knows the benefits of seeking a smaller, simpler life, it's hard and lonely to rebel against the rest of the world. I don't think my child needs to be the head girl or have straight A's to be amazing. And I don't have to provide four vegetable options at the dinner table or sit down to craft with them every day either. Thank you very much. Honestly, that all sounds too exhausting and busy. I want a simple but soulful life. Is that too much to ask for? You just listened to the post titled, For the Mom Who is Sick and Tired of Mom Guilt by Emma Scheib of SimpleSlowLovely.com. Just a reminder, everyone, though I bet all you devout listeners already know it, establishing good communication with your friends, your family, and your partner is an essential part of any relationship. Likewise, establishing a healthy communication with yourself is essential for your own mental health. And when you feel like you've maybe hit a roadblock, BetterHelp is here for you. BetterHelp will get your needs assessed and help match you with your personal, licensed professional therapist. They provide a safe and private environment for you to communicate with your therapist within 24 hours, plus giving you the flexibility of scheduling weekly video or phone sessions. Their financial aid makes it more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and you can schedule an appointment online at your own convenience. BetterHelp is not self-help or a crisis line. It is professional counseling where everything you share is confidential. Look, the whole old team and I want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash ORD. Join over 800,000 people taking charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash ORD. And thank you to Emma for a great post. Emma is a new author on our show, a self-confessed introvert who is on her journey towards living a slower and simpler life. She also writes about motherhood and living intentionally, as was evident in her article today. A big part of motherhood is setting a good example for kids to follow, and there is hardly a better lesson than what she discussed today about being kind, working hard, and accepting the times in which we can't do quite everything we may want to do. So, we all recommend you guys to come by simpleslowlovely.com for a lot more of her great work. And that wraps us up. That wraps up Thursday. I will see you tomorrow, everybody, for our final episode of the week with a great post on the gift of parenthood and mom life, where your optimal life awaits.